recording. Start streaming. All right, it's, it's showing up, showing up. Sis, what's going on? Good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you? <laughs> Great. I already feel so tired for two days. I know, I know. It feels like it's Friday. I know we've been all been putting in work, um, but that's just the nature of the week, but that's just the nature of the world that we're living in right now. So um, obviously I'm grateful for an another episode of Agree to Disagree A2D. I don't think people catch the whole A to D, like A to Z and I to the Delorney. I don't know if people catch all that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but every week, at, uh, at, you know, we come together just to be able to talk about um, just things that happen in the world, but as a brother and sister doing it um, as a family um, and uh, doing it with compassion, uh, but obviously with care. Um, and uh, there's a little bit more to that. I think we'll get into that in, in the upcoming weeks. But there's a lot to talk about today. Um, and I think we have a really, really relevant topic given everything that's happened over the past week. So, sis, I'm going to have you tee it up. Introduce yourself and let's, let's, let's get it going. Okay. So, you guys, I'm the D and A to D. Um, and and um, obviously, black women's experience in this world is to hold down the female point of view in this conversation. <laughs> so um, today we're really talking about protection or rejection. We have this really tense. You black women feel protected. A lot of black women feel exhausted and do not feel like we receive the same reciprocity that we give. Mm. Just with Megan the Stallion, you guys, like this past week, like Megan got shot in both of her feet. Some man shot her in her foot. She is a prof first of all, you shouldn't be shooting nobody. You definitely shouldn't be shooting a woman. And we also have living on her performance. She's an entertainer. Mm. Whatever, whatever you say about her career and the way she carries herself. This is how she makes money. She needs her feet. Mm. So she gets shot. We have 50 cents, the biggest troll celebrity ever making memes about her. I do also want to highlight. It seems as if men think that this is funny and not alarming and concerning. That is what social media portrayal is. Obviously social media is just a subsection of a whole entire a group of people and I also think that I want to highlight even though we have 50 cents and other men going in or cracking jokes you know taking light of something that is literally a brutality she was brutally attacked with a deadly mm -hmm. weapon um I do want to highlight that Drea which is a woman obviously you know was kind of poking mm -hmm. fun at it she was like you know they have this Bobby and Whitney love I want to love Like, that's bananas. But we can also talk a little bit about people, dis, you know, normalizing dysfunction, which I think is really highlighted by Drea's statement. Mm -hmm. But I think that is something we see not only with Megan the Stallion, but we see it with Breonna Taylor. We are always trying to hashtag and advocate for her life. Um, and this is a common theme, but, like, obviously the examples we want to use in these recent topics are things that are happening right now in the culture. Um, and that's my tea up. Well, I mean, this is a big topic, um, and I don't think I think clearly this topic has proceeded, um, you know, this past week. And I'm going to jump out and just really, really clearly say, um, black women feeling unprotected by by uh, black men is valid. Meaning, um, feelings are valid, and 
Um, I know many um, sisters who I'm close to, who, de- who I deeply respect, who just experience and feel that and have expressed that in so many different ways. And I think the feeling must be validated. It must be affirmed. Um, I think where this comes in or I think where the tension is in the conversation between brothers and sisters is just that, um, you know, I think any feelings towards men is, is it's I think it's loaded with so much more. Right. And so I think, for example, the argument we make around, you know, pushing people, uh, pushing back against black on black crime every time we try to fo- focus on police brutality Every time we try to focus on the systematic racism, there's someone who has kind of ill intent or in, in, it doesn't have genuine concern for the issues and say, well, what about black on black crime? And the viewpoint is that there's no such thing as black on black crime. The point is, is that there is crime, period. Sadly, we live in a fallen world that isn't the way it should be. And that we have crime to begin with. We have rape to begin with. We have uh, robbery to begin with. We have murder to begin with. These things happen across the races. No one race um, and no race and gender compounded is uniquely qualified uh, to do so. With that said, doesn't mean that as black people, we don't hold ourselves to high standard. I think that's part of kind of where this even this conversation comes in when we can affirm the feelings and the perception but I think this is why the other part of the topic of is this um, um, lack of protection and then or is feelings of rejection. Sometimes I think the sense that I hear is that also that's sometimes conflated with it because there's no data, you know, on protection, meaning something happens and we capture the data of whether or not a, br- a, a black man was in position. Right. A lot of times when we hear this topic come up, there was a point of abuse by someone high profile. Um, there was something like this between a brother and sister. And it seems like the conversation becomes confirmation bias as opposed to. So on one hand, I think as brothers, we have to be in a position of listening and hearing that perception and saying that's valid. On the other hand, I think the tension that some many brothers have is that there are many brothers protecting black women. The concern becomes it feels as though those things are dismissed almost in the same way that black on black crime. So every new example of there being a case of uh, abuse or a case of it's confirmation of a uh, of something uh, of something. And I think that could just feel like demotivating because it says like, hey, there's zillions of examples of brothers. Even this past weekend, I sent. I sent a, a, a photo in Portland. There was a sister out there clearly a protest and getting pushed around by the cops. This brother went there and pushed. And we have this situation in Long Island where you have brothers that are surrounding, but there's so many more stories that are not captured. Who's capturing the data on this? So I think for me, I think the nuance is that both things could be true, but I don't think we should conflate feelings with facts. And I think this is where the tension becomes between brothers and sisters, right? Where we're saying, I could affirm the feelings and we want to do what we and brothers want to make sure that respond. But also, it's also hurtful to almost seem like a black men are uniquely unqualified or uniquely incapable of doing these things. We could say, hey, you know what? From our standard, we don't want this to happen at all. We don't want there to be any points of violence. We want there to be. But then you're almost coming into this black on black crime type of argument to almost say like, well, black men uniquely don't protect our women. And I, I, I think I think we have to sit in that tension because I think sometimes that tears down uh, that could tear down brothers while at the same uh, while, you know, brothers who are doing so much. Uh, so, I, again, I, I want to kind of put nuance in here because I think the conversation I see online is so zero sum. It's like if you don't affirm that I feel, yes, I could affirm that you feel this way. And this is a reality. This experience is reality. But we also have to have an honest conversation about even personal feelings of rejection. What data is this based on? How could you make these generalized statements about black men and make your personal general? And I just think that's where I think we have to have an honest conversation as a community about what we should, what this really is and how do we deal with it moving forward? Sorry. So that's interesting that you say making your, um, your personal experience general. So when I led with, oh, look what happened to Megan, right? You're right. There is probably a lot more examples of people very, very much pouring out to Megan Mm. that we don't know about, right? Yes, what's going to make the headlines is, you know, the negative, 
right? I think that sells, tabloid sells, crime sells, right? There's a reason why bad things sensationalize and you can talk about it, right? And maybe we'll get, um, I know Megan Thee Stallion, for example, is sharing things that people have sent her. Rihanna sent her something and Lizzo sent her something. I'm sure there's men who are sending her stuff. I'm sure there's calls she is getting um, genders that are surrounding her. But you know what? I I would have to tell you a lot of times, and I even realize it's my own job. I'm in a union shop, and sometimes I think some of our members are losing their minds. But as a member of the union, I do not always share the same outspoken view. But I feel like the people who are hurt speak the loudest, mm. right? So when you go on social media, and Twitter, for example, or any form of social media, you you tend to hear a lot of people who feel victimized mm. more than people who are doing good. I have, and this happens even in the smallest sense. We we talk about this. We notice with like in female circles, your homegirl will vent to you when her man is acting right because when her man is acting right, she's busy enjoying <laughs> all that good stuff, right? Like. She don't need you to like be in her face. And maybe when you see her, she'll like gloat or you'll see the glow on her. But the conversations when he don't act right, them conversations be long. They be long. Gosh, like, you know what I mean? So it, it is true. Pain is a feeling that lingers long. Mm. You know, so. And as a result, happy moments don't sell as big as crime mm. does. Or they're not as sensational as lies. So I hear you that black men are protecting black women. And unfortunately, I will say that they may not make those headlines, right? Um, but it is also beautiful, you know, like, for example, we talk about the, the, statistics, the, the statistics around absent fathers. If anyone Googles the statistics, they're <laughs> false, right? CDC, people have done studies. Black fathers are present in the home, right? And I always love Father's Day on social media because we see these beautiful pictures of fathers. However, every now and then, there's a group of people who talk about, oh, shout out to my mom or all the single. But I do am with people who have a present black dad. I'm like, we celebrated Mother's Day already. It comes first. Like, mm. I see you single mom and I know it's a disadvantage. And I know how hard it is and all these things, but this is Father's Day. And unless we're talking about some gender thing, this is Father's Day. And and I say this because I do feel like black men who think that black women are not acknowledging your their work, their protection is paying too much attention to the naysayers. Mm -hmm. Because every black man has in their life a black woman who is rooting you on, cheering you, seeing you, affirming you, praising you, bigging you up. Mm -hmm. Right? And that black woman is what people need to be talking about. Because for all the people who are like hurt and projecting their hurt onto you, there's tons of black women who have black men's back and see that there is a part of the culture where we are in line, that we are seeing eye to eye. We're in sync. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times black men, because pain is a feeling that lingers long, tend to remember all the black women who was like, you know, in your face, disaffirming, you know, destroying yourself a your self-esteem, your identity, you know, just like there's always going to be a few people on Father's Day who spend time talking about the absent fathers, even though statistically they're just as equal as the absent white fathers. You know what I mean? So I do know there is a lack of miseducation mm. among the culture. But there's a lot of us who know the numbers, know the truth, and we can do that. But I think what we really want to get into is how do we love on black men, but still be like, this one is bad, right? It's like, the minute we start talking about this one is bad, the people that we love on be like, you don't ever talk about good stuff. All you talk about is bad stuff. And I'm like, yesterday, 
talk. Today's today's talk. <laughs> and I think that's some of the things that is happening. I think that's so well put, especially your point up front about, you know, um, you know, your, your girlfriends and hearing about a boyfriend and you don't hear about the um, the the good stuff that he does. You only hear when there's some bad report coming up. I think that's extremely, extremely relevant. Uh, let me go out and just really categorically say, I don't believe uh, that we, particularly brothers, but I think particularly any type of community should be telling uh, people who are suffering how to cry. And I want to be really clear on that. Um, you know, brothers should not be telling sisters how to cry. Um, and I think um, if sisters are, as I said, if sisters are, if, since sisters are sharing that they don't feel protected, that is something to listen to. Because again, we're not holding ourselves to the, the, lowest, the, the lowest standard. I think that's something that we have to respond to. But I do think that there are universal things that are at play, right? Is like, I think to your point around, you know, typically you only hear, you're hearing those who are feeling hurt the most. It makes it feel, seem as though that is exactly what's happening. It's kind of like what's the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The second piece is also even in a dynamic of relationship. This is why I think even if most people talk about family counseling and relationship counseling, things like that, they talk about, you know, the boundaries between family. And I think many of us probably have fallen short in that at some point. I know I have where your family's not as forgiving, right? Where, you know, you, you, you don't tell as many positive things, but when you actually share something negative, that's what they remember. I think that's the general ethos of the, of the dynamic between brothers and sisters, where if I hear, it's like, what is it for every compliment? You know, like you have to have 10 compliments for every like criticism, right? Because that's what people hear. When brothers hear, because brothers also are being victimized, right? In the world. So when they hear that, they're not as forgiving. Their wounds are like, what are these? And so sometimes that blocks, unfortunately, brothers from hearing, you know, and being affirming, right? And I want to make sure it was like, I think we should affirm, particularly those people who are in, in, in a position of just hurting. But I also, like I said, I think that we have not an, uh, accepted nuance, right? And I think we throw out the word gaslighting so loosely or we could, uh, you could affirm someone's feelings, but not necessarily equate that to facts. Meaning I could say that's valid that you're experiencing that. But to your point, right? Think about how many things that are stereotypes that you hear confirmed by confirmation bias, right? So again, we don't have data on protection or not, but we talked about how, we, how you can conflate that like almost black on black crime to make it seem like brothers are somehow ill-equipped and are not doing it, one. Two, you know how long we've talked about even brothers being with sisters or marrying sisters? You know how long that's been debunked by data? Where it says like almost 90, almost 90%, and even when you do the slice by socioeconomic and income, brothers overwhelmingly marry black women. On top of that, even when you even bring in data in terms of those in the NBA and professional leagues, overwhelmingly, over 85 marry black women. And so similar now, when you hear it now, I think it's that same type of dynamic where I think sometimes guys were while we're like, yo, this is factually not true. And then the other person feels invalidated. And I think this is the same thing. You, you see this in relationship counseling, stuff like that. I think as a community, we have to do two things because I, what I'm not, what I don't love right now is that it's zero sum. So if there's not like, I feel this, so it's a fact, right? Then all of a sudden it's like, like brothers can't even engage or what sisters won't hear the fact that it hurts brothers. It hurts us every time there's an example, we're getting pummeled, right? And so I think again, in many ways, we want to, brothers want to step up and make sure that we're hearing and we're affirming. At the same time, I think this was the, the, the topic that was brought up by the sister, the post that did Erica, uh, Erica Lachey, where she posted, anytime a sister posts that we need to big up our brothers, you, you, you hear on the, you, uh, you know, on the joints, it'd be like, she's a pick me. Oh, she's trying to find a husband. It's kind of like it, this idea of even affirming brothers in time is just difficult. And I just think we're sounding, it, it's a lot like, we're just a traumatized people and everyone is, is, is looking for resources, affirmation. Brothers are and sisters are. And again, we're just throwing grenades. And so I'm hoping that we can kind of move from healing from that. But that's my sense of what's happening. And I think we have to call a spade a spade with it. So first of all, I just have to say this because I, like, I literally laughed so hard. 
I have a cousin who you cannot tell her black men with money, black men in the sports don't marry white women. <laughs> I'm like, that's not the case. I literally spent so much time. I literally hope my cousin watched this because I spent so much energy telling her this is not true. And she refuses to believe me. And that's why I'm saying the miseducation because of black people this is way. really, <laughs> yes. She's and then she goes, Well, you see this person, you see. I'm like, Do you know how many players are in the NBA? You cannot count three, four, five, even if you count 20, that would be a small population. So, I do think that black women and black men do have this like strife with each other that is based on feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, is we have like normalized dysfunction, was something I brought up a little bit earlier. And I say that normalized dysfunction doesn't only happen with black men. There are women who are also um, normalizing the dysfunction. When Drea, a black woman, talking about she, when she had a relationship where she gave a punch, that is, if y'all don't see that and just like get so alarmed, that is unfortunate because she just flagged to us what she thinks relationship between a man and a woman should look like. And we know, I think everybody know, abuse is like a no-go. Right. And it is just very objective. But but one thing after we talk about physical abuse, which I think everyone agrees is a problematic and a no go. Um, there is some truth that m women underestimate, undervalue men's emotions. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think that is a normalized dysfunction that we all need to challenge. I challenge my friends all the time gender specific mm -hmm. okay so if a man is emoting he's just doing an emotional mm -hmm. behavior <clears throat> that's not him being right and, and because all humans emote so i just saw something really interesting um psychologist was defining how patriarchy is something that even men should not subscribe to because it is telling men that your feelings are not, there's no space for your feelings and it's all about superiority and control, right? And humans and a man should be able to feel and, and if that feeling is not a dominant feeling, it doesn't need to be a dominant feeling. It can be vulnerability. It can be the longing for someone. It can be attachment to someone. It can be love. It can be soft. It doesn't need to be this hard thing. You know, we talk about great leaders in America or great leaders in the world, Napoleon was like this lover boy who like conquered all of Europe, right? Like you can, we talk about even awful Hitler who had this love story allegedly. So like even the strongest of people have feelings, want to belong, want to be accepted. And I say that because I do think that there are women in my life who make men a little bit too black and white. And the nuances of the male species is not seen as soft, you know, in the way that we are more comforting, protecting of women. I do think we understand that black men in life, you know, you guys are, the police are intimidated by you guys. We know about racism. We also understand you guys are in prison in a larger population. So we understand the big target things. But I do think when you guys, as a male species, like, well, we don't feel affirmed by you guys. We, the average woman will roll their eyes, you know, will roll their eyes. Be like, what you talking about? Like, come on, get out of my face. Like, you know, like those reactions, I, I wouldn't be surprised if those are the common reaction one get. And I'm also not surprised in that clip of the woman, you know, saying, hey, we don't big them up enough. We don't like um, talk about all the good things men talk, uh, men do enough and for her to be described as a pick me because i showed the same clip to my best friend she's like oh that girl mm -hmm. pick me she's just trying to get chose right so like i'm not gonna deny because all black women are are not the same but i do see some of those women that men can describe i know them they're my friends i actually love them even though i have to hold them accountable and push a little because there's a variety of options within the black female species and there's a variety of options within the black male species. In the same way, we can be like, 
50 cents, what you said was trash, you need to apologize. Um, and the same way we can be like, that's an abusive black man. They are like, that man is very affirming, very protective. And we need to, they're not a group. But I also think black men, this sounds really bad after I told you guys about being emotional. There is a super sensitivity because I feel like if you know you're protecting black women, if you know that you are exhibiting healthy behaviors and honoring spaces, why would you care so much? Why does it hurt so much? Because there's a lot of things black men say black you know so i'm not internally internalizing that so much and letting it be a heaviness so much but you want to get a black man real you know excited or agitated let us have this conversation about like you know problematic men they just feel like you talking about me <laughs> you always doing i'm like you if you're not problematic then you know i'm not talking about <laughs> you because you can talk about problematic women i'd be like I wonder about those women. I don't know. You know, I'm still, I'm calm. I know who I am. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you touched on so many uh, things. Let's just be clear and lean in saying emotions are healthy and emotions matter, right? You know, feelings matter. I think what we're trying to do is the priority of feelings and actually leading our reality. I think it's a big deal. I think the second thing that I, to your point around brothers struggling with this is that I think the tension, I think Chris Rock actually in one of his, his, his specials, he talked about waking up in the morning, every morning and looking at the mirror and saying f in uh, so many words, forget how you feel. Let me make this woman happy, right? Your feelings don't matter. And I think that that is kind of the stereotype, but quite frankly, that is kind of almost sometimes the expectation because you'll hear a lot about, oh, toxic masculinity and men need to know how to communicate their feelings. But the truth is, Many of many of the sisters who say this, I sense also can't handle when a man does, because I think what men experience is that when they share their feelings, it is dismissed. And it certainly has no footing if it's put against a woman's feelings. So if it's your feelings versus my feelings, it does not matter. Yes, we may get the big chicken. <laughs> but when we see think about it, just think about fathers. They think about the things that you talked about. It's just like your feelings, your things don't matter. It's just what you do, right? And so as much as we want to push back against the stereotype, the reality is that our expectations, I think we experience as brothers and many brothers experience, is that when it's compared to what you feel, your feelings override. My feelings are dismissed. And then it's almost like, oh, this feelings. But you said you, you, know, you want us to communicate. But when you communicate, you can't handle our communicating, right? And I think part of it is, I, I think the reality is that I think Part of it is also um, just our, our expectations, again, our societal norms around, again, you know, what we expect from and what we could actually handle. I also think on the other side of this, this affirmation piece is a big deal. The reason why it's a big deal is that I think, and this is something that I do think, this is why I think I'm very sensitive to it. I'm trying to grow in sensitivity even more, is that I do think if you don't come from a context where you saw you know, I don't think it's, you have to learn to love. Love is not necessarily inherent. We love our, we try to love ourselves and even we struggle with that. But to love someone else, you, people have to teach you how to love them. I do think there's a, a, a distinct language, not necessarily people have different love languages, that of, of loving a woman. I think you're gonna, and I think for us as men, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be learning that our whole lives if we are lucky to, to, to marry a woman, lucky to marry a black woman, lucky to marry any woman, you're going to be learning that your whole life. But it seems like there's not an understanding that there's a way to love or respect a man and things in terms of communication that feeds us because it's too often dismissed as ego. But when it comes to you, it is a, a firm. And I think this is a, a part of a chasm that sometimes reflects the dynamic of what we come from. Because many people who are hurting who say this, in context, I'm not saying across the board, many times have not seen a healthy example. They didn't come from a situation where mom was affirming or that they came from trauma. So where are they going to learn how to communicate that? You have to learn that. You have to be humble enough to learn that. Similarly, even when as guys, and again, I'm not saying this makes it, you know, that, that the people who come from two parent households or healthiness makes it perfect or you, no one's going to be perfect. What I am saying is, though, the loud voices that we're hearing in the streets are people who are, I think, at the end of the day, they're hurt. They're hurt. 
And a lot of that hurt precedes this conversation. It's from home all the way through. It's generational. And I think as a guy, it's, some, it's overwhelming to, to, to handle that and have your own needs. And so I think on both ends, uh, there is this, this need to say, what does it look like? Not in terms of what you think it is, right? Because I think a lot of times when we hear, when guys bring up feelings, we'll be like, nah, we support you. We're out on the street. But what happens in your home? Right. So when one of us dies, I don't doubt that you're going to be out in the street. But how do you deal with the ones in your romantic life, in your home? How are you publicly versus that? And so when guys share that, it's dismissed. And so the, I think the best way to even capture it is how women feel, perhaps, when they are saying that they don't feel protected and men dismiss them. Well, if men, if you accept that men have feelings, the same feelings that you say we need to understand and be healthy then you can't wholeheartedly dismiss any time a brother f- brings up the fact that, no, I don't feel lo- I don't feel respected. I don't feel supported by you. Can you hear that in the same way that you're asking brothers to say, hear me when I say I don't feel protected? And to your point, I think, again, we're sitting in a traumatized people, and that's the thing. And I, think, and I, and I do think this language of um, affirmation of both people, we need to learn it. Um, and I think too many of uh, men's needs are dismissed as ego tripping, as somehow if we were to position women's needs as trauma recovery, that people would feel people would feel, uh, you know, insulted. Right. And I think we have feelings, too. Right. And so I just want to I want to kind of affirm that I think we're coming to a good place in that. So to be held accountable to to hear that your partner, if we're talking about romantic places, um, doesn't feel loved, doesn't feel respected, doesn't feel honored. Women struggle with hearing that. We struggle. Because in our heads, we're trying our best. Right? And I am learning every day that what we were told, what we were told or conditioned by social media or whatever that would make a man happy is not what Because <laughs> it comes from other women and not men. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm learning. I am learning. If you really want to love a, a person, you have to ask them how they want to be loved. And that requires two things. One, for you to be able to hear what they have to say. But two, it also requires that human being to understand what they need to be loved, right? And be able to con- convey that, you know? Um, there's an art to mm-hmm. writing recipes, right? And everybody doesn't know write their love recipe. Mm-hmm. And so if communication is, all, and communication is hard, it, it's very difficult. And I think what we think you know, men like and women like, it's not really what we Mm -hmm. like. And I think we're all proceeding on presumptions because no one is really taught it. Even if you saw something at your house, you might not want that. And what you saw, you may not even fully understood. You were a child, you were being raised. You weren't watching them and studying them and asking them a Q&A about every nuance in their lives, in their romantic mm-hmm. lives, right? So even if you lived with a, uh, a parents who were married, you don't know what they did to make it. You don't know what the fights were. I have a friend who I think has a very romanticized uh, edition <laughs> of what, you know, her parents <laughs> were. And... I'm not saying they didn't last. And honestly, you know, and I I said this um, when we talked about Jada uh, on the Red Table, uh, that interview. There is a beauty about when you make mistakes um, and your partner still can hold your hand. And sometimes, a lot of times, the depiction is, is a man messing up and a woman taking him back. But there are moments, what we saw in that Will and Jada Red Table Talk, regardless of what Will may or may Mm -hmm. not have done, Will got on that table with her and held her hand at the end. Mm -hmm. So we are both humans who are not perfect. Because even if you had a perfect class on how to love a black man, okay, taught by the best, you know, a black 
black man, PhD in sociology, study them. You're a human. You're going to make mistakes. I follow recipes and I be I still make mistakes. <laughs> step by step recipes and still be leaving out ingredients. I'd be like, oops, yeah. I forgot the eggs. So, and I say that because you are loving another mm. human being. And so I I have to understand. And then when you love that human being, you have to understand, you have to realize your own biases. Right? So when I cook, if they tell me to put two cups of sugar one and white sugar, I put one cup white sugar, one cup brown sugar, because I'm already biased towards mm. brown sugar. So I'd be remixing the recipe. And a lot of times black women hear black men and we just remix stuff. Mm. Cause we just um sometimes we think we know a little bit better than you guys do because we were taught patriarchy and we were taught that you guys are very stoic people and dominant people we're not really taught about your vulnerabilities your insecurities your self-doubt we don't really understand that because we too are conditioned in a society that has portrayed men to be emotionless and women to have all the emotions and then you meet us at our well into our adults and then you have to dismantle all this stuff and there is a fight about that there is some disagreement about that because you guys are multifaceted people you can be at work and be really really dominant and then come home and be soft and we'd be like oh there was a switch that happened sometimes we're demanding that switch and sometimes we don't even notice the switch so there is some nuances that, that i will concede but the basic point is it would be nice that when you have decided you found somebody or when you start dating you're like hey my name is lawrence this is how i like to be loved hi what's your name how do you like to be loved about this thing so you you mean you, you said you like this? Can you really give me examples? I think that would really break down some walls. Wow. Mm. And all the walls are not created by only trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But people want to be bigged up. You know, I learned a lot in therapy how to affirm myself because sometimes you are looking for external affir affirmation, but you have to affirm yourself. Mm. And I do want to no, no longer subscribe and I know tons of black women who are loving black men and they no longer subscribe. They really want their man to be happy. And they are trying to find this medium because there is, if your feelings are hurt as a man and my feelings are hurt as a woman, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a tough <laughs> It's going to be a tough one because yeah. that is a human idea. I don't, it takes a, a level of maturity to concede your feelings mm. and make room for somebody else. Mm. I can concede my feelings and go pick up my son or concede my feelings to make sure the bills are paid. So maybe we got to go to work and I want to be at home. But, you know, there's some stuff that it is really tension. And I do think a lot of times a woman's feelings win. But not always. Sometimes y'all walk away, y'all leave. All of y'all not built the same. So, but I do understand that Chris Rock analogy where he woke up every morning and he's like, you know, your focus is on your wife. And I do think that is a depleting feeling. And I can understand how you can't survive forever with someone if you've always had to put your own feelings to the side. That's not sustainable for a man or a mm. woman, any human being. You know what I mean? That is not sustainable. Um, but when we talk about compromise, that's going to be very hard because compromises, you want to talk about something else that's not taught? Compromise. Right? Like what that looks like and what that feels like. Got, he got mm. so that is another thing there's so many layers to the tension mm. um, um and like you said, um some of it deals with your own existing traumas and your own pre-existing like forget your, your dad at home everybody has dated some respectful so then i'm meeting you and and there comes and that's the same thing with friendship, right? I know some females who be like, I can't have no girls. Girls are messy, da 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 da. And that's because a, a former female friend hurts you. And you need to unpack and heal from that. But we also have to just say healing, trauma, affirmation that's new stuff that we in this age, in this era, has had the ability to engage in. And those are not easy mm. tasks to heal to identify your traumas, to even recognize and appreciate the value of a firm. You know what I mean? So these are all new things that we have to understand. We're like 
kids just learning how to walk, just learning how to ride a bike. We're going to be stumbling through this for a long time. Mm, mm. I, I, I mean, I, I think you, you, you captured it so well. And I, I'm, I think beyond even hearing and understanding what your partner's um, desire. And again, this is pulling from this larger conversation we're having about our community, kind of the family of brothers and sisters and, you know, what's going on with Meg Thee Stallion, what's going on with some of our brothers and then hearing what Erica Lachey, I think there has to be a space in your mind and heart to recognize that sometimes the tension is not that you did not know. The tension is getting over the fact that sometimes your capacity is limited. Right. And I think, you know, even the idea, sometimes we push back against certain languages because not because we don't know it, but because it stretches us so much because it's not natural to us. And I think that is a that's a area of, about humility. But I think that is just like a really challenge. I mean, when you're good at everything and somebody's telling you and then you feel like you got all the facts and you read all your magazines and you talk to your boy you talk to your, and then they're telling you how they want it. You're trying to justify. You're almost trying to tell them that how they are like to be loved. Something's wrong with it. And I think that maybe women feel that from brothers. Brothers definitely feel that from sisters where we're trying to here's how. Oh, that's a, a patri patriarchal and respect. Oh, that sounds oppressive. And it's just like, no, we're different than you. And, you know, I think if you come from trauma or if you've seen only a negative aspect of it, you only seem you only could assume the worst. Which I even see in scripture, like believe the best is such a beautiful thing. Right. And even this idea, right, I think even this notion of compromise, I think the, 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 the goal is not so much that guys are like, hey, you know, like we take over. I, I, I think this is, I think a lot of times the patriarchy, it, depending on how you define it, it's like one of those things that people define it all differently, how you define love, patriarchy. And so, you know, I, you know that's almost a conversation, a separate conversation that we should have. But I do think for men who take the worldview of leadership, I think it is when you, I think people just want to know that it matters to you, that it matters to that you try to go out of your way to make sure that I, that you're pouring into me as a brother. Because in those cases, when a guy truly feels that from this, that her, your feelings, the things that you desire, your likes and wants is valued by your partner. Then for, 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 from it, for people who have a healthy view of leadership, their view is, okay, I'd be willing to. I'd be willing to because at the end of the day, I think this is the hard thing when people we sometimes think like it's a, like so at some point somebody got to pick what's on the menu. Like at some point you got to pick your dinner. Like at some point you got to make decisions. And sometimes it's not a blend. You can't make a blended decision. And so sometimes it's like, you know what? I really want us to move to Austin and you really want to stay here and someone has to make a decision. And at some time, sometimes that, that it, it, the guy in that role may just say, you know what? Hey, you know what? I've considered everything. We've talked about it. And then is willing to do that because more than anything. But I think the tension is that when both people don't feel valued or, or that what they think value, then that's where the tension and everything comes on. And I think that's maybe the, the folly of the happy wife, happy life view. I think the spirit of it captures something that is healthy. But I think that's what, what comes up. And so, yeah, I mean, I think just taking it back to this, this overall thing. My, my number one thing is I think we, we should close with this view. One, number one, I'm so thankful. Thank God um, Megan Thee Stallion's okay. Um, thank God <laughs> uh, for sisters who affirm brothers publicly um, and willingly, whether they called me <laughs> pick me's, right? That's kind of example of like pick me where you call affirmation pick me when you don't necessarily know the desires of our heart. Maybe, you know, like it, I think uh, the, the, the third thing is that I think we have to see as brothers and sisters that we are still healing. There was a, what was the quote that we, there was a quote to say, you know, heal so you can hear what's being said outside of the lens of your trauma. There was some quote that was going around. You need to heal first. I think on all ends, there needs to be healing. And to your point, if again, you know, those who are loudest, typically those who are hurt the most, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they describe the natural, the natural order of things just because they're the loudest. I think either way, I do think that brothers have a willingness. I do think that there's some great opportunities now for guys to even step up and do that. And I think that they do want to do that. But I think they want to be acknowledged. It's like kind of in like relation to what they said, like every time you always, that's a no, no people being counseling. That's a no, no. I think brothers don't want to keep hearing you always. That's not true. When many of us die to protect you. 
right? Um, and if now your feelings of us is conflated with your feeling of rejection romantically or you're not around, then that's something from a healing perspective that I could affirm, brothers can affirm, but you also have to do the work to recognize what part of that is. Your personal cannot necessarily mean that it's general. Um, and I think more than anything, I mean, I, I think that this is a healthy conversation to have as long as we can hold two things being true, that feelings are valid, feelings are healthy, but if feelings color everything, and if your feelings are always paramount and it always dismisses the feelings of others, whether you're the brother or we're brothers or whether you're the sister, it's not healthy either way. And so I think that's where hopefully we're moving towards when hearing what's going on um, in the world and seeing this dynamic, because I do think it is valid that uh, men feel this way, women feel this way. And I think the more we understand this, the closer we'll be. I think that is a good point. I do want to say that um, what I would like to see in, in closing our conversation is I think that, you know, you, you share the statistics about black men who are married to black women and how black men um, overwhelmingly marry black women, um, regardless of their profession, socioeconomic status. And that's because black women Um, happy wife, happy life. And, and that is a common saying, right? Chris Rock is not the inventor of that saying. And I do think there are societal constructs and normalized dysfunction that we need to address in society. Subscribe to that is not serving the race, the culture, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so areas to grow. I think that, you know, the way society works, the way journalism works. And traumatized people who, who need healing seem to hit the surface more, right? Because a healthy relationship that may not be perfect, but is, you know, functioning in a way that honors two people, um, they don't get a lot of shine, you know what I mean? So when we're here talking about, like I said, Meg the Stallion who got shot, we also are not bigging up all the men who were probably at her side or making sure whatever she needs, she got, right? Because that person didn't hit social media because that person understands social media is a joke. It's a misconception or only a small portion of real society. Um, so that is something we also have to challenge ourselves and just like, I started off by saying Drea says she was she got it was in some crazy relationship where her foot got shot. I also understand that within the woman population, some of us are not okay. Some of us are still working on that healing because when we say, "Oh, you gotta heal, you gotta heal," that's not easy. That is hard. When we say you can't let your feelings overshadow your logic, your perception, that's not easy. That is hard. But that's not an excuse for you not to work. That is not an excuse for you to hurt other people, but I do want to mm -hmm. acknowledge the difficulties around that. So a lot of things as we think about like better when we have these conversations is only to improve the the bonds in this community, the bonds in our culture, the relationships in our culture, because whatever you do in life, it's nice to have humans around you. And you want to be kind to those people, uh, whether they're there for a lifetime or just a period of your life, you want people around you. So learning to love anyone, whether that is a friend, a partner, whatever situation, with, with respect and mutual mm. reciprocity, mm. it's important. So I think that's like how mm. I want to end. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's where we'll put the pin. Uh, sister, it's always a privilege to be able to speak with you about this. Always. You know, we talked about, uh, you know, our first time. Now this is our second time saying, what are we supposed to say? I guess we're, we're, we're telling you, like, if you love this photo, uh, the video, um, this click, conversation that we have, what, you do it this time. You do it this time. <laughs> you, if you like the video, subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe to our <laughs> A2D channel. 
um, share it um, with uh, you know friends, family, and and and, and leave a comment. You know, uh, tell us some things that stuck out to you. Um, we want to keep this conversation going because we know with the conversation there's healing um, and obviously that strengthening and that's just healthiness that we are all aspiring to. So again, we pray that you all have a great week. Um, we'll look forward to catching up next week. Again, feel free to send us a note, email us uh, if there's topics or things that come up that you're interested in. But again, we're thankful that you have joined us and have listened. Again, share, subscribe again, and speak soon. Take care. <laughs> Peace.